So this thing is awesome. The coolest part about it has to be this face mask right here. I mean, how thick is that? So those bars are 80 thousandths in diameter, and actually they're about an inch and three quarters long of just purely unsupported aluminum. you think those things would chatter and vibrate like crazy, bad surface finish, right? But we actually figured out a really cool way to make those without any chatter at all. Check it out. This is the beginning stock we're starting with. The first thing we do is run a multi-axis pocketing tool path. Yeah, interesting. From this angle, it almost looks like 2D, but that actually rotates the rotaries? Yeah, this actually created some really cool motion. And there was a couple really important reasons why we used multi-axis roughing here, right? Because this could have been done with a few OptiRough and 3D tool paths, but the whole process of these tubes really relies on keeping material when you need it. And you always need to keep some material behind these things because that material is what's supporting it when it's being roughed and finished. Mm -hmm. So with this multi-axis pocketing toolpath, you can see it actually goes through, and here's a stock model after it's done. We leave something maybe a little bit over an eighth of an inch across in cross section by maybe 200 thousandths deep. This piece is still really, really strong. So that second multi-axis roughing toolpath comes in and establishes essentially the face of these vertical bars. And you can see from the stock model here, this is the point where we begin our finished toolpaths. So you can see these things are basically about at their finished size, but their square cross-section kept them pretty rigid. Yeah, how rigid is it when you're machining in multi-axis anyway? They were surprisingly rigid. You know, the grow brain, extremely smooth, and the tools, again, really, really nice, so totally silent. I was actually standing next to the machine when these ran, and you couldn't hear a thing. So let's take a look at the actual process for how these things were done. I had a really great experience using Simcoe Verify with such a really big part file and really complicated stock. It seems to run really, really fast. So here we have a couple of little OptiRough tool paths that essentially establish the diameters of these tubes. And then we come in with our multi-axis finishing tool paths. Yeah, I can see where you would need the multi-axis for that. All right, so what we end up doing is we actually have, if you look at the stock model, on op one, on the first setup, we come in and we finish the back sides of some of the middle bars. And then in the second setup, we're able to come in and reach the tool around the bar, around the backside, and kind of finish our way out. The benefit of this is we keep this nice sharp corner with a lot of extra material out here, which I think was essentially what kept enough meat on that part to keep it from vibrating. So this first pass here, this is actually a semi-finished pass. We're leaving 10 thousandths. And we just kind of wrap the tool around in five axis. So is that a reduced neck ball mill? Uh, it is a little bit reduced, right? So it's actually really handy because, as you can see, we get really close. Whoa. But with holder checking and collision checking, we're able to keep the tool away from the stock. So this second pass here, this is going right to zero. Again, from the bottom, right? This was actually something we figured out was we couldn't come from the top because we'd be wiping out that rib of structure material. So coming again from the bottom allows us to keep this little bit of structure up top. Mm -hmm. And then the final tool path of finishing these bars, wrapping over the top, where we are just basically removing our structure material and finishing all at the same time. This process is you know, established as essentially just three finishing operations. Of course, every one of these bars across the part had different range of motion. Some of these on the outside, I needed to apply some limits to, right, because I don't want to tilt the tool past 100 degrees of tilt or else we might collide with the machine table. I would say it was essentially copy and paste from one to all of these, which it was, but there was a little bit of unique work in between all of them to keep the machine running safely. This is where Verica came in really handy, right, because I had to make sure I was not going to collide with the machine table and make sure everything was actually going to run well at the machine. So Simcoe, Verica, Amugi, Grobe, all these partners came together and made what really is a difficult, nearly impossible piece of machining and made it a great success. So it was really cool to see all those partners come together and mesh perfectly on something so cool.